Over the last 100 years, Hollywood has treated us to some of the best made films of all time. But we're not going to talk about any of those. Up next on WMCM Screening Room, our least favorite films and why we hate them. Stay tuned. Welcome to Screening Room, everyone. I'm Rachel Osman. And I'm Mark Wilson. And I'm Matt Leitner. Today we're going to be talking about some of our least favorite movies. And my pick is Spring Breakers from 2012, directed by Harmony Corinne. Uh, it stars some of my favorite childhood Disney Channel uh, stars, Vanessa Hudgen, Hudgens and Selena Gomez, as well as Ashley Benson and James Franco. The film involves four lifelong girlfriends that are so desperate to get out of uh, their college dorm that they rob a restaurant and head off for spring break. After partying and partaking in lots of other illegal activity, the girls end up in jail. They then encounter a local pimp, Alien, who bails the girls out of jail. And after this encounter, we get to watch the down spiral of not only these girls' lives, but the movie itself. Here's a look at the trailer. slow on those tapes. All I know is I'm not going to sit here another day. It's spring break. How are we going to get enough money I don't in know. time? We're the only ones still here. It's spring break. I'm tired of seeing the same thing. It's spring break. It's your chance to see something different. It's spring break. Just get that cash. Pretend like it's a video game. We can do this. It's spring break. Twisted fingers in the club. I got the young. Gotta hide your body. What a magic place, y'all! You can change who you are, y'all. Bikinis and big booties, y'all. That's what life is about. Who are you? My name's Aileen. Why are you here? I saw y'all in there. They like nice people. Come on, y'all. Why you acting suspicious? <laughs> I knew y'all special from the moment I saw you. It's written on your faces. Because I just have a really, really bad feeling about this. Let's cause some trouble now. Break, break, bitches! I got my dark tan and oil. Lay out by the pool. This is the American dream, y'all. Spring break. Y'all want to die tonight? Spring break. Get down! I'm scared, aren't you? Spring break forever. Spring break forever, bitches. The only barrel, bearable element to this film was the music. They featured some black keys and Skrillex, which is some music that I really like. Uh, otherwise, I thought the film is atrocious. Uh, there's a lot of aimless walking around. There's no really plot drive. Uh, there's no storyline progression. A lot of the scenes are just silence. And they're just walking around uh, wherever they are. It never tells you. And um, there's a lot of nudity, gun violence. There's really no big plot to the story. And they make it seem that uh, if you, you can rob a bank and go on spring break, they make it seem like it's so easy to do that. The, the girls in the film, they just they went in the bank, or they went in the restaurant, I'm sorry, and they just uh, were beating people up senselessly for no reason and taking their money, and then they drove off into the sunset and never got caught. I just feel like that's pretty unrealistic and uh, dangerous. Uh, also, I'd have to say that the female leads scream more than they actually talk in the film, and they're not screaming because they're scared. They're just screaming for no reason. <laughs> Um, and so uh, the, budget, the budget for this film was $5 million. It's an, actually an indie film. And uh, I felt that Corinne probably with $5 million could have made 
a much more interesting and less violent and soft porn type of film. <laughs> they just could have done a much better job. I don't know. What do you guys think? I tend to agree. This movie, like you said, it had it made no sense really to me. There was no reason for the characters to do any of these things. Like it, the movie starts fine with the girls being on spring break. They want to go somewhere nice, like to the beach, and then they start partying together with a bunch of people. But then they just happen to meet a drug lord after getting caught. Uh, mm -hmm. I think in a illegal party doing well, drugs yeah, and things, and, the... and then just a whole bunch of nonsense happens after that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, because uh, I tried to stay positive sort of while I was watching this film, thinking like there has to be some underlying purpose in this film because I'm just watching it and I'm like, there's no purpose. Not in this one, no. But I think it might be that they're just trying to maybe shed light on the spring break culture for college and just making it seem like, you know, this is how obnoxious it is and like there are stories where girls go go on trips to spring break and they don't come back. Yep. And like uh, that actually happens in this film, but I think it could have been portrayed in a much more effective way for sure. Yeah. Yeah. A lot less creepy. I mean, James Franco just looks like a goofball. I, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I guess for entertainment purposes, it was a decent movie. I mean, it keeps you interested for a little bit, but not much to it, I guess. Yeah, and yeah. Rachel, going back to what you said about this being an indie film and mm -hmm. tying that connection to you know what happens with girls with spring break usually, I didn't get that perception of this movie at all. I didn't think there was really any point. I pick, didn't pick up on that like at all because it really, it didn't seem like it was trying to make that kind of a point. And it's interesting that you'd see that because I just didn't mm -hmm. see it in the film. It just seemed like it was some party movie that didn't really have a purpose. They just wanted to you know have you know theatrical like you said soft porn just to you know have girls in bikinis to have people drinking and partying and then you know throw in a drug lord as James Franco and you're set for a movie. Yeah, I mean really could have done a much better job. All right, uh, so next we're going to be talking about Sandlot. Mark's going to be talking about the Sandlot. Sandlot. So we'll take it right back when uh, with this. With Perfect Pets. Perfect set pets, for Perfect yeah. Pets, yeah. yeah. I'm Zeus, a one-year-old American Bulldog mix. I'm very handsome, outgoing, and social. I look tough, but I love to snuggle. Hi, I'm Rita. I'm an easygoing, gentle old lady looking for a quiet forever home. Hi, I'm Chevy. I'm a two-year-old Shepherd Pit mix. I'm outgoing and would love to be your running partner. I'm Lizzie, a 10-year-old energetic beagle, and I love to play with my toys. I can't wait to have a new family. To find out more about adoption for these pets or others, contact the Cooley Region Humane Society at 781-4014. Remember that phone number is 608-781-4014. Make sure to make a call over there. Um, next we'll be talking about the Sandlot. Um, I chose to do this movie just because uh, the Brewers had their opening day yesterday, so I figured we might as well go back, uh, take a look at one of the classics. I do want to reiterate, though, that I do not hate the Sandlot. Um, I just found a few flaws in the movie, and it's got to be a good topic to discuss. All right. Well, the Sandlot, in a, a general summary, is just like a coming of age of a group of friends. Um, they use baseball to come over to overcome just different obstacles within their life. I mean, Scotty Small is the main character. He has um, moved to a new town with his stepfather and his new mom and his mom. Um, he has to make new friends during the summer before the school starts. So that's a really big problem for him too. Um, Benny actually comes, Benny Rodriguez, uh, he comes and becomes a hero, uh, takes Scotty under his arm, takes him to the baseball field, gets him to do a whole bunch of really cool stuff. Um, but really, Scotty joins up with the crew, they talk about baseball, they have a, a blast. I mean, they go out, they play baseball against those little snotty nose punks from uh, <laughs> down the street. Um, a really good scene, you get a lot of smack talk for when you're a little kid. Um, the pool scene was also a really big deal, I mean, who doesn't remember Wendy Peppercorn? I mean, <laughs> great movie scene. Uh, I don't know if any kids actually tried that, and I hope they didn't, but for theatrical purposes, it was a good scene. Um, later on, they get on a tilt the world. Uh, we see him try a, a little bit of chewing tobacco, which might not be that appropriate, but um, a lot of this is explained on the trailer. Um, we'll shoot you over there right now. Nice job, nice job. Really nice. Good. 
Meet Scotty Small. <laughs> Is this all you had written? Yeah. It's eight. L. Seven, well, it was good, good ad lib there. My lace is over. Man, this is baseball. You gotta stop thinking. You just have fun. Climb trees, hop fences, get into trouble. Just stand there and stick your glove out in the air. I'll take care of it. Now he's in. Yeah! All right! With the coolest guys in the neighborhood. They've got the look. Wendy Peppercorn. Wow. Hey, girls. They've got the moves. <laughs> They've got the rap. Blockhead, geek, jerk, idiot, moron. You bob for apples in the toilet, and you like it. You play ball like a girl. Yeah. I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh, no. <laughs> but something else has got their ball. Dad's father gave it to him. Babe Ruth signed that ball. Babe Ruth! We gotta get that ball back. You got any bright ideas? Initiate retrieval section number one. Power connect. Come on, help me, it's heavy. Now. Twentieth Century Fox presents. Hey guys, it's the Sandlot Babies. You're the ones that making all that racket. A lifetime of adventure. Come on, Squid, you can do it. Pull through, bud. Little bird. The Sandlot. A little piece of paradise, a half a block wide, and a whole season long. Scotty, have you made any friends yet? Oh, oh I'm sorry, Mom. Again, this is one of those great movies um, for all times. I still watch this movie, but um, there are a few things wrong with it. I mean, you start off the movie with uh, Scotty playing catch with his dad. Um, the ball goes right through his glove and gives him a black eye. I don't know if he got a really bad glove or his dad is just chucking the ball at him, but uh, he probably shouldn't get a black eye from that little game of toss. Um, one subject there. Um, the, next is, the next part of the movie that I had a problem with was with the tilt whirl and them taking a the chew and getting on the tilt whirl and just ralphing everywhere. First off, I mean, carnies aren't like the best people in the world, but I doubt they'd let like, nine, nine year olds get on the Ferris wheel, like 10 of them get on there. Big old Shaws, and they get on there and start hurling. I mean, it's unrealistic, but I guess it's a really good message. Uh, put a pretty bit negative image in all like, little kids' head, like, don't chew the back. Well, I guess that's a really good part of it. And then they just kept the tilt the world going. Yeah, just kept it going. <laughs> For a while. Yeah, so, I mean, it was really funny, but... The puking scene, even that, is just like an episode of Family Guy where they just keep puking forever. <laughs> never stops. But um, that was really cool. Um, the other part that was really unrealistic was the dog. I mean, in, one of the, in the trailer, you saw how the dog was like as big as a two-story building. Like, yeah. that's unrealistic. I, <laughs> I mean, and then the like, contraption that these people like come up with, like, they make this arm that's like attached to a vacuum, they try to suction a ball out of a yard. And this beast just tears it apart like it's nobody's like, business. Yeah. Just out there killing it. But I mean, it's a really cool story because these kids use a lot of like American uh like um qualities that we like have that we like to talk about. I mean they're inventive, they're creative, mm -hmm. they all just like work together to kind of find this common goal and the end of the movie they do it really well. So yeah. And the first time I saw this movie, it was actually only three years ago. I saw this movie as a freshman in college. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, you know, seeing this movie that's meant for younger audiences, it was kind of odd to see it because, like, I didn't get yeah. the dog being two stories high, you know, and then them doing all these shenanigans and stuff. But I think if I would have seen the movie as a kid, uh, it probably would have resonated mm -hmm. with me a little better. You know, I would have understood, you know, maybe it was just a scary dog. And yeah. they, you know, having it be two stories tall is just, you know, kind of yeah. their perception of the dog. Yeah. But it's a really funny movie, even when I was, it you know, is, 18 yeah. and watching the movie. I mean, even look at the significance that it's had on our culture, like the, the Chuck Taylor shoes look exactly like the ones on there, and then um, even I got a sweatshirt that says, you're killing me, Smalls. Like, it's just cra it's crazy. But um, we're going to wrap it up here, and we'll go off to Perfect Pets. Um, check out those cute little dogs.
Introducing WMCM's newest sports show, Hot Shot Sports. It's got games, memes, highlights, GIFs, and everything else that you'd ever want from a sports show, like everything current from social media and all other sports action. So tune in to Charter Channel 989 and Campus Channel 6 for some Hot Shot Sports. Do you need better opinions on the biggest sports stories? Then you need Sports Talk Live. They cover all sports all the time. From track and field, to soccer, to football, gymnastics, and just about everything in between. Sports Talk Live is your place for sports. Sports Talk Live, Tuesdays on WMCM TV. In 1977, the entire movie industry was turned upside down when George Lucas introduced the world to Star Wars. That first fateful movie, which was pegged to be a giant flop by almost every studio, turned out to be one of the most successful movies of its time, and it launched the entire Star Wars universe into an overarching dominant franchise. 38 years and 6 years later, the world was introduced to the new saga of Star Wars, Star Wars The Force Awakens. It was a revitalization of the epic universe and its mythic characters that once ruled the galaxy. The Force Awakens quickly stamped its mark on history by having the largest opening weekend in history, earning nearly $248 million. Characters like Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, and Princess Leia made their return to the films, and newfound characters like Rey, Finn, and Poe Dameron made their mark on our hearts. With the Empire destroyed in Episode 6, uh, in Episode 6, Return of the Jedi, uh, a new threat arises, the First Order, who try to dominate the galaxy through fear and technological power. The First Order uh, are taken on by our ragtag group of heroes, Rey and Finn, and they're thrown into the middle of a war that they have no idea about. Rey and Finn uh, are, one, Rey is a lonely desert-dwelling junkyard scavenger, and Finn is a former stormtrooper that now must fight for their lives in order to achieve their destinies and quell the darkness that hides around every new star system. With the help of the space pirate Han Solo and his trusty co-pilot Chewbacca, they just might have a chance, though. The Resistance may just be able to win the battle after all, but their chances are still pretty bleak as Kylo Ren, a new Sith, or I suppose an aspiring Sith, uh, attempts to complete his turn to the dark side and destroy the friends and family he once held dear. With the tension surrounding these characters and the insane action-packed sequences, throw in a little bit of quick-witted humor, and you might just have a success story on your hands. If you haven't seen the movie yet, what's wrong with you? Here's a look at the trailer. No one. I was raised to do one thing. But I've got nothing to fight for. Nothing will stand in our way. Finish what you started. There are stories about what happened. It's true. Just let it in. 
When I first saw that trailer for Star Wars The Force Awakens, I was thrilled. I'm a lifelong Star Wars fan, and I was so excited to finally be able to catch up with our old heroes and learn to see what happened after the Empire was destroyed. But I have some serious problems with this film. And I think the biggest one that I think everyone notices if they've ever watched any other Star Wars movie ever, it's pretty much an exact remake of Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope. Throw in a Yoda-like character and uh, something like that from Episode V, and it's, you pretty much have Star Wars The Force Awakens. Honestly, this is, seems to me like a new installment in the Star Wars franchise for a new generation, but for anyone that has seen the old, uh, the old trilogy, you've pretty much seen Star Wars The Force Awakens. It's really the same exact movie. You have this lonely, desert-dwelling uh, hero protagonist that gets thrown into the middle of a war she has no business being in. You know, you have a droid carrying secret plans, uh, and then eventually that leads them to the rebel base, and then they fight this Death Star. They call it the Star Killer Base, but come on, it's a Death Star 3.0. Yeah. And it's like, I, I just had a problem with it because it was just the most unoriginal script, really, I've ever seen. Yeah. How do you guys feel about the movie? Um, I actually didn't hate the movie. I thought they did a lot of character development, which is what they need to do with the new protagonist and such. But mm -hmm. um, I thought it was really cool to have a woman as the lead role and then the, uh, the black actor as a counterpart. It was really like mm -hmm. a different dynamic to the whole Star Wars scene. Yeah. That's what I liked about it. I, I really like those aspects, yeah. Yeah, well, I have never seen Star Wars, any of them, nor this one. So, I mean, but I can say that I know this franchise probably makes a lot of money. Oh, so much money. Like, every time a new film comes <laughs> out, um, it's just like everyone knows about it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it makes so much box office money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's exactly the reason why Disney bought up the rights mm -hmm. from George Lucas. Yeah, well, I mean, look at all the cool stuff they've been able to make. Like, mm -hmm. these characters, I mean, yeah. all of it. I remember Jabba the Hutt even. Like, he was a goofy-looking guy. But <laughs> it was fun. It was but fun it, to watch. it worked, yeah. It was entertaining, yeah. I really exactly. liked the film, though, too, because uh, in the old trilogy, when George Lucas first made the film, they used a lot of stop motion in order to create the effects and blue screen, um, but not as much CG, because CG obviously wasn't that good in 1977. Um, and so they actually had paid homage to that technique, and they kept using stop footage in order to create a lot of the effects. So I liked that part of it. Mm -hmm. But really, I mean, the characters, yeah. I'm, I'm a big fan of character motivation. Because when I'm watching a movie, I have to care about the characters and their story and what they're doing and why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. like with Spring there Breakers, has to be a purpose like, for the movie, exactly. Yeah. And I didn't feel that with Star Wars. Yeah. You know, I didn't know why Rey felt the way she did or why she did uh -huh. the stuff she mm -hmm. did. Yeah. And then Finn as well. He kind of contradicts yeah. himself a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. He's a st former stormtrooper that had a problem with killing uh, innocent civilians. Yeah. And then in order to escape from the stormtroopers, he ends up killing his own people that he grew <laughs> up with for his entire <laughs> life. And he had no problem with it. Yeah. So, you know, I like the Star Wars film, you know, for a new person just watching it, like a six or seven year old who this is their first experience with Star Wars. It's an okay film. Uh, but yeah. I think for the lifelong Star Wars fan, there's really not much that you can take away from this film and say, that was great. But no one's going to be able to compare to Han Solo and, I mean, all exactly. those original characters. It's, it's never going to be done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like they paid homage to him by including them in there, but. Their story arc yeah. really didn't matter compared to the new yeah. characters, which exactly. was unfortunate, I think. Exactly, exactly. Um, well, I do believe that we need to move on to some more related uh, movies. I mean, there's some really good movies. I mean, The Sandlot had a bunch of sequels. I mean, two, three. I think there might even be a four, but don't quote me on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I wouldn't watch any of those sequels. I didn't like them as much. I mean, like I said with the Star Wars, like, it just, the originals, that's, that's just what it is. Mm -hmm. Sequels are never as good as the originals. Yeah, no, and actually Spring Breakers 2 is coming out with no. a second. <laughs> no. Yeah, but it's not going to be the same director. Oh, and also, um, everyone who was in the movie uh, doesn't, doesn't want to be in it again. Of course they wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. With, they probably watched it and were yeah. like, oh my like, God. That's what it looks like? I did that. <laughs> I should never do that again. <laughs> Honestly, watching that movie one time was too much, I think. Yeah. Maybe like an hour of it, I'd be okay, but honestly, it was, it was bad. Mm -hmm. Like I said, character motivation, you know, is important. Yeah, it's like there, they it, just don't go in-depth enough for the characters. No you sense. really don't know who they are. Yeah. yeah. So and I, a lot like Project X, like you said earlier. Yep. Yeah. Exactly like Project X. Big party movie, I mean, if you want to get wild and have like a crazy scenario take place and watch it, like, it's a perfect movie to watch, but... Exactly. A lot yeah. of directors, I think, are trying to remake that type of atmosphere. And like Mark, you said before we got on air, your Project X, 
you know, it didn't, it wasn't a great film, but it actually became somewhat of a cult classic. You know, kids, you know, college age kids, mm -hmm. high school kids, they really liked the film just because it's exciting, you know, that's the things they're into. Um, and it wasn't a good film by any means, but, you know, it became successful because yeah. people just liked watching it. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. a lot of films try and redo that type of thing and try and remake that Project X formula. Uh -huh. And it just really it just doesn't, doesn't work. work. Just crazy situations, mm -hmm. crazy, wild situations that'll never happen. Yeah. <laughs> that you but. probably realistically don't even want to be a part <laughs> yeah. of. No, that's no, very I dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> do you see some of the yeah. things they do in Project X? Yeah. I wouldn't want to be a part of that. Yeah. No well, <laughs> Mark's like, well, maybe someday. I mean, it depends on who's throwing the party and all the things that are going along with it. But yeah, I mean, if you guys are interested in some more baseball coming up, uh, there's definitely Bad News Bears, one of my one of my other all-time favorites. That's I mean, actually a great film. It's a little bit more um, more mature audience, though. You might want to watch it before you allow your kids to watch it, of course. But <laughs> yeah. the, it's, it's hilarious. I mean, there's an older version, there's a newer version with Billy Bob Thornton. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like the newer version personally, but yeah. the old one's still pretty good, too. Yeah. I would say with Bad News Bears, I'd say probably watch both of them. Because um, as a kid, I would watch the old one first, and then I saw the new one. And mm -hmm. they were, were related, but they weren't exactly the same. Um, and I liked the different things they did in both those films. Yeah. So actually, in that situation, the sequel actually wasn't that bad. Yeah. <laughs> or the remake of it, I suppose. Yeah, it's usually the first one you watch. That's the original. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So coming up, new in theaters, we have uh, Pandemic, My Big Fat Greek Wedding 2, which I actually saw with my mom, and it's hilarious. Batman versus Superman Dawn, the Divergent series Allegiant. And coming soon, we have movies like The Boss, Mr. Right, The Jungle Book, which actually looks pretty interesting from yeah, Disney yeah, remaking that in person, and Barbershop, Next Cut. I'm really excited about The Jungle Book, actually. It looks really interesting because yeah. it's like, it's something new and no one's really ever done that type of thing before, too. And the graphics look outstanding. Yeah. But um, for some new movies on DVD, we have the Star, Star Wars, The Force of Week Awakens. You've been <laughs> warned for that. You've been warned um, about that one. We also have Point Break, <laughs> The Hateful Eight, and Concussion. I haven't heard too much about Concussion, but I know it's a new Will Smith movie. And yeah. It's one of my favorite actors. Yeah, no, so. and I've seen um, oh, uh, The Hateful Eight. Mm -hmm. It's a really weird, weird movie, but I just like the way it was filmed, it's kind of cool. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. With Concussion, too, Mark, um, I heard like when it first came out, people thought it was going to be a great film. Mm -hmm. And actually, Will Smith kind of got snubbed on his uh, Oscar ballot for that uh -huh. movie because some people thought it was really good and others just really hated it. Yeah. So it was some type of a polarizing film. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. And I believe those movies will be down at the Riv. Um, if you get a group of your friends, go down there. It's a really cheap place to yeah, the, watch the movies. Yeah. Um, yeah. They have the movies down there, The Finest Hours, the Star, for, or Star Wars, The Force Awakens, Whiskey Fox Tot. Tango in Hail Caesar. Um, these movies are going to be down there. Um, like I said, bring your friends. Yeah, Check I really enjoy going to see movies at the Riv. You know, it's a really cool kind of old theater. Yeah, I've never um, been there. It's really nice. You know, yeah. a discounted price really for movie admission. But you know, you see these movies that already came out a while ago. I think though, if you wanted to go see Star Wars, even after everything we've said here, you know, going down to see the Riv is a good place to do it. Because it's a nice place, you know, to yeah, get a discount. If you have your student ID, do you also get a discount on that? You know, it's been such a long time that I, since I've been there. I'm not yeah. sure. You might, though. Mm -hmm. but yeah. We'll definitely have to check I know, out. just watching, like, movies that are big. I mean, Star Wars you want to see in theaters. You're not going to want to watch that on DVD. Just all the theatrics they put into that movie. Yeah. Um, definitely something you want to watch in theaters. It really is a good-looking film. It's one of the... It's well, it's the best film looking film that of the Star Wars series that I I think. Yeah. You know, okay. George Lucas tried to do it in the in the prequel trilogies, but you know, being in 1999 and early 2000s, the CGI just really wasn't up to stuff. So, in this yeah. film, it really it looks gorgeous, and that's the only thing I don't have a problem with this film. <laughs> yeah, most it looks modern amazing. films now we have just like great filming and mm -hmm. like photography and stills. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, that seems to be all the time we have for you in the screening room. Again, my name is Mark Wilson. Rachel Osmond. And Matt Leitner. Thank you again. Tune in next week.